competition, Hopeland Trophy winner from the Collingwood Football Club, Travis Clough. <laughs> Did Melbourne give you guys a bit of a scare today in the first half? Yeah, exactly. That first half, they were pretty close to uh, knocking us off, but uh, the boys did pretty well in that late in the second quarter to come through and kick a few goals late in the what, second half. What also. is going on with your starts? You're like on, you're on some sort of go slow strikes thing. I mean, you're not starting your quarter time. What's exactly. The last two weeks we've been pretty slow, and we issue, we did talk about it, and uh, we spoke about the issue. But uh, what do you talk about and think, oh, that was good. Let's do that again. Yeah, <laughs> do it again one week at a time. But, uh, they knocked us off again in that first quarter, and they didn't get early in the second. But uh, yeah, we did all right to come through late in the game. Was Anthony Rocker ever going to play today? I was intrigued by Mick Malthouse's comments that the team should be named later and maybe Anthony will play. Yeah, Mick plays a few mind games, but there was actually a chance he was going to play. But um, I think late afternoon yesterday, we decided he's going to play in the VFL. And I think he did all right down at Skilled Stadium today. So hopefully Thursday or the week after he plays again but for he us. You really think he, he might have played today? I thought he was going to. He looked really good during the week at training, and I thought it's the best he's moved in probably a few years, so looking forward to having him back. Hey, Trev, the role of a forward now, it's not about just taking a big grab and kicking goals, is it? I mean, how much emphasis is it is on it now for, for the defensive game coming out of the, the back line at the forward line as well? Exactly. A lot of clubs now talking about your whole forward pressure and having so many tackles in the forward half, so I think that's the key now. If you've got a lot of small midfielders in there that are going to play in the forward half, they're going to be able to do the tackling, and that's let us big blokes take the big mark. It's almost like you let the defender get the ball just so you can tackle him. To get the <laughs> exactly, just get the little DIs and the tackle, but we should do that, actually. Now, what about you, mate? Um, your form's good. You're, you're a Copeland Trophy winner, but I worry about your warm-up. I worry about what you do before the game and how it affects people around you. This is actually from last year, right? Though yours, Dale Thomas is trying to relax, and something's happened here, and I believe... I believe... I believe you... I mean, you're sharing an iPod, but really, he's not happy. <laughs> and you put him off. I mean, is that is that how you is that how you is that how you? <laughs> I mean, is that, all right, I'm gonna get this out. Is that how you clear room in the forward line? <laughs> Give me a bit of space, and I'll just let it drop, and everyone hopefully clear out for us. Great effort, though. He didn't get up and leave. He sat there and took yeah, exactly. it. He did sit there. He t told us, gee, that wasn't the greatest smell of thing, but then he put there, pulled the top Must up. Must have been a good tune. <laughs> You've been the media man this week, the media mogul. I saw a um, really great piece in The Age today. You've done a great interview there, and Jared Healy, I guess, had a critique of your game and your role in the side, etc. Something... I'd love to ask you, I think it's a fascinating question about Collingwood, is who is your number one player in your mind? It's, it's, it's a great thing. Like, a lot of clubs have your, your superstar players. We probably don't have one, but obviously like, we've got Alan Dider, who is a superstar player, but probably doesn't play week in, week out to his full capability. But that's probably the greatest thing about us. We don't have that superstar player. I guess. You don't think it's better to have, you know, the big Jonathan Brown? or? Well, it'd be great to have Brenny. It'd be fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> I don't doubt that. But, um, no, I don't really know. We... We had Bucks a few years ago, and we had Clement and Lecura and Holland. They were really great players for us, and they've moved on now because of age. And um, hopefully, that's probably the younger players, Pendlebury, Thomas, and myself, he's sure to like, step up now to really take on the reins. You guys seem, you all seem like very, you're very close down there at Collingwood. Um, your brother plays at Carlton, Cameron. Um, there was a little bit of non closeness going on at the start of the year when there was, uh, in a practice game, he, him and Satanto Halp and the Irishman had a bit of a. Yeah, Barney. Changed a few uh, fisticuffs there, but uh, yeah, it's a bit unusual to see in a, on a football ground between two teams. Yeah, what is, how did you feel about that? Yeah, I was, I was on the plane on the way to Perth for a pracky match and had a few missed calls and text messages from the family going, gee, you wouldn't, wouldn't believe what just happened back here, and got off the plane, gave, gave Cam a call, and he just filled us in the information and what ac actually happened, but... Yeah, personally, I was quite disappointed. Has it never happened at home between you and him? Yeah. No, I'm sure he's no, given you a kick up the backside that, that, before. That's the thing. I don't think I've kicked him up the backside before. <laughs> <laughs> I, missed, I missed out on that one, so hopefully get home and give him one just for a bit of fun. Now. Hey, tell, tell us about what's, what's going on with the Collingwood cheer squad. Can you just confirm or deny this for me? So the cheer squad, all the positions were made vacant, and then the cheer squad asked to reapply for their position. Is that right? Yeah, that's what I hear, but I think it's pretty much the same cheer squad, so I'm not too yeah. sure what, what went on there. So. And is it true they had to pass uh, a membership test? <laughs> Probably did. No, because I've got it here. <laughs> <laughs> pretty tough. You've got to <laughs> get down. <laughs> get it, it. No, it doesn't fit. <laughs> There's only... Yeah. Which, is, which explains why there's currently only two members in the Collingwood Cheer <laughs> Squad, because it's pretty tough. Have a go. Have a go. Might need four or five minutes to work that out. Don't go anywhere.
And Trav, the Hawks and Geelong, who do you see as the bigger threat? Play Hawthorne. We've knocked uh, Geelong off a few times. They did knock us off in the grand final in the NAB Cup, but play Hawthorne. They're pretty oh. structured at the moment. Stirring there we the go. before you play them next yeah, week. Yeah, got on Thursday night, so it could be interesting. All right, that is indeed the correct answer. Yeah, again, <laughs> that must have brought back memories for you, though, Trav, tool of the week, because you won it last year. I've won a few times. I've got two sitting uh, nicely next to my Copeland at home. So. And, you know, <laughs> you get sick of the same old cliches that you hear from footballers every week, but uh, last year you gave us an analogy that will go down in history, one of the best. Adelaide had come out and said it's going to be a low-scoring game, so they're, they're pretty straight to the word. They don't talk a lot of uh, smoke and shadows behind the, behind the window. <laughs> I can't. It that was 15 can't. analogies in one. <laughs> well, you chucked them in a blender. I just uh, poured it out and whatever came out of my mouth came out. So. Oh, stop. Yeah, Made I'll perfect sense to me, Trav. Trav's sticking around. More to come after this. Front. Travis, is it true that there was an incident with a horse and Eddie Maguire the day you signed with Collingwood? Yeah, we were all sitting around. We had Mick, uh, Eddie. Home. We were all sitting around in the living room at home and the horses just pushed the door across and just wandered in through the, past the kitchen table and up next to Mick and Eddie and stood there and looked at him and just walked onto the table, grabbed a little bit of fruit off the table and <laughs> did a little bit to walk around and straight back out again. Is, 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 is it true it started a drinking out of the fridge straight from the container? <laughs> <laughs> Pick it up straight that down the house. Amazing. That is, that is incredible situation for a horse to do that. That is <laughs> 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 <laughs>